Let's send it down to the Kennedy Space Center where CNN's Lou Dobbs is reporting from. Hello, Lou. Miles, thank you very much, uh, and thank you for the eloquent reporting on this tragic day. It's now been eight hours since we lost the, the wonderful crew of Columbia. The pall that has settled over Kennedy Space Center cannot be exaggerated. Uh, this is a, a, a place of uh, adventure and imagination. It is a place where people take their lives, their livelihoods, their mission very, very seriously, and they take that uh, mission uh, seriously with great pride. To see the uh, the mood here, to feel it, is all the more uh, remarkable because the pad behind me from which Columbia launched 16 days ago, uh, a launch is the most exhilarating, most wonderful electric experience. The, uh, the joy here is uh, one of these shuttles rises from Earth to go into orbit is, is just matchless in terms of the experience. To see, to feel, to hear here today the, the mood, the somberness is uh, in stark contrast. John Zarella has covered the space program for CNN uh, through good and terrible. And terrible. Uh, John, your thoughts? Yeah, I, uh, I found that uh, during that press conference that we, we just listened to that uh, uh, they really were opening up their souls, uh, and not not just the, the here's the facts, ma'am. As, as although as engineers, that's what they they certainly gave us. And you know, I, I remember I look over my shoulder now, back to that uh, countdown clock there, where 17 years ago I was standing at the edge of the water watching Challenger lift off, and things are a little bit different today than they were then from the standpoint that you know after Challenger, NASA put into place lots of of, of much better ability to handle this eventuality than they had before right. Challenger. Uh, I found that as different today. Um, the information was far more forthcoming today than it was initially after Challenger. The chaos that surrounded this place right. back then uh, on that first day after the Challenger explosion, that uh, uh, everything is far more organized today than it was then. Far more organized, I think you're exactly right. Uh, NASA better equipped to deal with a tragedy that we all hope never comes. Uh, as we listen to Ron uh, Dittemore, the, the head of the shuttle program, and Bill Teplin, the uh, chief flight director, uh, you watch two men struggling to come to terms and much too soon with the tragedy that is, as uh, I thought Ron uh, spoke so eloquently, so personal. Because the people here who work at Kennedy at the Johnson Space Center, all the NASA centers are around the country. Uh, they are a family, as Ron Dittemore said, but they're also uh, somewhat cloistered. They struggle for their budgets. They are not given the respect that many of us believe they deserve. They are not given the attention that, uh, that many of us think they should. And uh, to watch him struggle with trying to understand so quickly and being pressed so quickly to understand what went wrong on Columbia is is in its own way heartrending. And, and when you you know we're lot, we're watching again now uh, up as as we see Columbia in that liftoff, and they did spend a lot of time in that press conference discussing uh, this bipod area, the connection area where a piece of foam had fallen between and, the orbiter and right, the, the orbiter tank. and the giant external tank, uh, and, and and listening to all that, and yet again reflecting back to the experience after the Challenger accident. And he pointed out, look, this accident happened at 207,000 feet. The Challenger accident happened literally right the there. Outside. You had great video, close-ups, camera work uh, that they could analyze. This one may be far more difficult in the end to figure out, don't you think, Lou, than, I, than Challenger? Yeah, I, I think without question, but I think there is another similarity here. Very quickly. We focused on the temperature on the day in, uh, of launch of Challenger. Very quickly, the engineers, the scientists, the mission people have focused on that one piece of insulation, apparently the size, approximately the size of the crew hatch, from the bipod that struck the left wing in some location. They're not even clear at this point where. That is telling us a lot because that's coming straight from them. They're struggling to deal with it. We watched Ron Dittemore. What are your thoughts, John, on that? 
But he, he also went back and said, of course, let's not speculate. It may end up to be that this has absolutely nothing to do with the catastrophic accident but, that we had today. But at the same time, you're absolutely right. Very quickly after Challenger, we focused on that image that showed that literally like a flamethrower burn through of the solid rocket booster that in, in, into the external tank that ultimately ignited the vehicle. Uh, and again, they do seem to be focusing fairly quickly, if we can say at least this, on something that went wrong pretty clearly on the left wing. I mean, that seems to be where their focus is right now. And Ron Dedimore went to great pains uh, to point out that he initially misspoke, that he said that it had anomalies that were reflected by the eight sensors. Uh, it turns out that what they did have, and he put this uh, correctly, they simply lost those sensors, as he put it, as if a wire were cut. We're not going to have the data that we want so quickly, and especially those engineers and the, and the mission control people who manage this flight and who are ultimately responsible. And you can see how much they feel responsible for the lives of these these seven astronauts. Uh, it's it, it's worth going back to again to Challenger, unfortunately, on this day to talk about how long it's going to be before we know what happened. Yeah, and they're talking about the fact that uh, you know that, that that maybe five months that the program might be down. And I recall certainly very vividly as you do, Challenger was uh, 19 January 28th, 1986, and we didn't fly ch again. Uh, Return to flight and discovery till 1988, almost the end of 88, if I right. my recollection is correct, in November of 88 before discovery took off. The, this is, uh, in all of this pain and tragedy here and uh, around the country, indeed around the world, the engineers, uh, I'm so proud of Ron Dittimore, and I know lots of people are, because he is struggling with the hard, tough analysis that everyone here will be working so hard to go through to come up with a concrete result so this never happens again. But the process is going to expand beyond simply the engineers and simply the scientists. It's going to be a political discussion as well that will take, and, and there will be a natural process in all of this that includes healing, because this is a tremendous loss. Once you get past that initial healing process, then just as, at, again, after Challenger and the Rogers Commission and the report and the political implications, and in this case, the situation is far more difficult than it was after Challenger in that you have a space station up there now that you didn't have after right. Challenger. You could take two and a half years on the ground, get your problem solved, and work it out. You have an incredible commitment to the space station, to other international partners that didn't exist to the level they do today. Which is a state three vehicles. Which is a statement of the way in which the space program in this country and indeed the world has advanced. Tomorrow, the Russians will uh, launch a progress vehicle to, to resupply station. And after that, it's not clear what the next steps will be. Uh, the, and Monday, Sean O'Keefe, the NASA Administrator, was to present to Congress his budget, talking about all the wonderful things that are underway, uh, nuclear propulsion, for travel to Mars, uh, a new space orbiter, and uh, obviously all of that is now on hold. With John Zarella, I'm Lou Dobbs. Miles O'Brien, back to you. Thank you very much, gentlemen. Appreciate your insights. Um, let's do a little technical business uh, while we kind of wrap things up here. I wanted to just tell folks what a bipod is, uh, just briefly, because we've been using that term quite a bit and uh, banding it about. If you take a close up here, um, this is a simplified version, but this model does show what we're talking about. It's the attach point right beneath the nose of the space shuttle to that external tank. The external tank containing uh, oxygen and uh, hydrogen in it. Super cold stuff, 400 degrees below zero for the hydrogen, 200 and some odd for the oxygen. Uh, the hydrogen is the coldest sub substance on Earth, the liquid hydrogen. That bipod is the place where they think a little piece of foam fell off and hit somewhere in here, the leading edge of that wing. And 